Hello guys and welcome to this video. My name is Christopher Grabowski, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. Today I would like to speak to you about the new cloud-delivered form factor of the Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector. I want to show you how it works and how to deploy it in your own network. There are also two new connectors and a new dashboard view I wanted to show you. Finally, you'll see a demonstration showing how easy it is to configure and later on use the cloud-delivered CS DAC. Until the recent 7.2 release of software, the Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector was available as a containerized application running on an on-prem Linux machine. With the launch of the Firepower Management Center in CDO, we introduced the cloud-delivered form factor of CS DAC. Now the CS DAC is ready to use in the CDO's tools and services and allows you to easily integrate with both cloud-delivered as well as on-prem FMCs. The CS DAC container runs in the cloud in your tenant. It is fully maintained by the CDO team in the backend, so you don't really have to worry about the health monitoring, capacity, or backups as you would with the on-prem form factor. The CS DAC in your tenant has a direct internet access and allows you to easily grab dynamic attributes from the cloud providers, as well as the public feeds. The CS DAC is available out of the box with your cloud-delivered FMC, and as you will see in the following demo, the integration takes just a few clicks. Another great news is that you can share the attributes from the cloud-delivered CS DAC with your on-prem FMC. For this, you need to onboard your FMC to CDO either with the secure device connector running on a virtual machine or by using the recently introduced SecureX onboarding method, which is actually my favorite as it does not require an on-prem connector. In this release, we also added two new CSDAC connectors. If you are a GitHub user, you can now subscribe to the public feed and enrich your firewall policy with dynamic objects of individual GitHub services. With the Google Cloud Platform connector, you can configure dynamic objects defined by GCP labels and network tags. The cloud-delivered CS DAC supports all cloud and public feed connectors. The only exception is the VMware NSXT connector, which requires an on-prem CS DAC instance. If you would like to learn more about the on-prem and the cloud-delivered deployment options, have a look at the CS DAC feature page on the Cisco Secure Firewall Essentials Hub. You'll find the link in the description of this video. Another interesting feature you'll see in the cloud-delivered CSDAC is the new dashboard. The goal is to show you the essence of the CSDAC configuration in a single and easy-to-read view. It is also designed to streamline the CSDAC setup in an intuitive way. In the dashboard, you'll see a list of the configured connectors along with their current status. The arrows represent associations between the connectors and the dynamic attribute filters. Finally, you'll see the list and the status of the FMCs receiving dynamic attributes from the CS DAC. You can also use the traditional set of tabs you might have seen in the on-prem CS DAC. For each component, you'll see a button that allows you to display more details and drill down to the configuration. Clicking on one of the buttons opens an interactive menu on the right-hand side with additional options. You can click on the individual elements to drill down to the details. In this view, you'll see the configuration of each element, and you can also edit the settings of the object or delete it altogether. The interface provides links to associated objects to help you follow the logical configuration flow. In our example, you can see there is one dynamic attribute filter associated with the connector we are currently editing. Coming back to the main screen, once you select a section, you'll see a button with horizontal dots. It allows you to add a new connector filter or an adapter connection. You can also use the GoTo link to jump to one of the traditional tabs. The configuration window pops up allowing you to set all the connector details. Notice that all navigation you've seen remained within a single dashboard, which is actually our intention as we want the interface to cover all aspects of the CS DAC with very intuitive and optimized navigation. In the following demonstration, you'll see me doing all cloud-delivered CSDAC config using the new dashboard exclusively. Now I would like to show you the cloud-delivered CSDAC and how easy it is to set it up. In the demo, I'll walk you through an end-to-end -end configuration. First, I'll configure a GitHub public feed and then a GCP connector along with the dynamic attribute filters. 
Lastly, I'll configure the adapters to share the dynamic objects with the Cloud Delivered and the on-prem FMCs. Here we are in the Cisco Defense Orchestrator's user interface. If we navigate to Tools and Services, you'll see the Dynamic Attributes Connector option is now available. Notice that the new dashboard screen is the default landing page for the CS tag. Currently, there is nothing configured, and the interface prompts you to start with either a connector or an adapter setup. In the connector section, you can see the icons representing all supported cloud and public feeds providers. On the adapter side, you can see an on-prem and cloud-delivered FMC options. I'll start with adding a GitHub connector. As you can see, the connector is pre-configured with GitHub's public API URL, and the only thing you need to configure is an instance name. I'll run a connectivity test to ensure the CS that can reach the feed, and I'll save the config. The GitHub connector is now active, and you can click on it to review the configuration. You can also use the horizontal dots button for more actions. Notice that CSDAC created an automated filter which puts IP addresses received from the GitHub's feed into dynamic objects that you'll be able to use in your firewall policy. You will see these dynamic objects in the FMC's external attributes once we finish the CSDAC setup. Now let's configure another connector. I'll use the horizontal dots button here. As you can see, we have a list of the supported connectors. I'll go for the newly introduced Google Cloud connector. In order for CSDAC to access resources in your cloud subscription, you need to set up service account with basic viewer role. The CSDAC online documentation becomes very handy here, as it provides step-by-step -step procedures how to configure service accounts with minimal permissions required by the CSDAC. Navigate to the Configuration section to find setup instructions for AWS, Azure, GCP, and others. Before I recorded this video, I actually followed the procedure from this guide, and I already have the service account and the key file required for the GCP connector setup. Now back to the CSDAC, I'll set up the region, and I'll paste the key in the JSON format as provided by GCP. I'll confirm the connection is successful, and save. Notice the interface highlights that I don't have any attribute filters yet with an exclamation mark. I'll add one filter now. I need to select GCP connector we just created and set the name. The string you type in here is the name of the dynamic object that you will later use in your firewall policies. Next, we need to set filters, which tell CSDAC what resources in GCP to monitor. In other words, you specify which GCP servers the CSDAC will match and add their IP addresses to this dynamic object. The CSDAC pre-populates the labels and network tags from your GCP account and allows you to easily select them from the drop-down menus. Here you can see a pair of labels and two network tags. If we quickly switch over to my GCP console and have a look at one of the running instances, you'll see I assigned an environment and OS labels to this VM. If we scroll down, you'll see I also attached a laboratory network tag to this VM. This is a small example illustrating the concept of the dynamic policies. You can set these attributes arbitrary to logically group your cloud resources. The CSDAC can then read those tags and dynamically add IP addresses of the matched servers to the firewall objects. Effectively, the firewall will automatically adjust the enforcement policy in the real time without the need for manual changes or policy deployment. Now coming back to the filter configuration, I'll set up my first filter to match Debian OS system. You can click on the Show Preview button to see the list of IP addresses matched by this filter. I'll save and add another dynamic object. Now this time, I'll match all VMs assigned with the laboratory network tag. Again, I'll check the preview to see the matched IP addresses, and I click Save. 
Now with the two connectors and the attribute filters configured, the CS deck is ready to share dynamic objects. The next step is to set adapters pointing to the cloud delivered and the on-prem FMCs. In my CDO tenant, I have the cloud delivered FMC enabled. Let's have a look at the external attributes and confirm there are no dynamic objects currently configured. Okay, there is nothing here. Let me return to the CDO. In the inventory, I also have two on-prem FMCs onboarded. The RTP FMC is onboarded using SecureX, and my secondary FMC uses a secure device connector installed on a virtual machine in Warsaw. Let's confirm the on-prem FMCs don't have dynamic objects either. Now let's check the SDC onboarded FMC. Nothing here either. Okay, let's go back to the CS deck and configure the adapters. All three FMCs are in the CDO's inventory, so the setup will be pretty straightforward. I'll quickly add one by one. Let's start with the on-prem FMC. As you can see, the CS deck supports a single FMC deployment, as well as high availability pairs. The CS deck provides a list of available FMCs from the CDO's inventory. The only thing I need to do is select the desired one. No additional configuration details are required, as the CDO already has a secure connectivity established with the onboarded FMCs. I'll do a connectivity test. I can save the config and add a second FMC. I'll save. And lastly, I'll configure the adapter to the cloud delivered FMC. Again, the CS deck already has all the details, and I only need to type in the name of the adapter. Now we have the end to end configuration. We can see the connectors in the active status, the associated filters, and the three FMCs receiving the dynamic attribute filters. Let's confirm the dynamic objects were pushed to each of the FMCs. I'll start with the cloud delivered FMC. In the external attributes, we can now see the GitHub objects and the two GCP dynamic objects I've configured with the network tag and the label filters. We can see the IP addresses pushed from the CS deck to the FMC, and you can also see the various GitHub dynamic objects created automatically by CS deck. The cool thing is that these dynamic objects will be updated in real time by the CS deck if there are any changes on the provider side. If you use any of those objects in your firewall policy, the changes will also propagate to your managed firewalls without the need for policy deployment. Now let's have a look at the SecureX onboarded FMC. The objects are here as well. Now let's have a look at the SDC onboarded FMC. Now all the dynamic objects we configured are available for the use in the access control policies. Thank you very much for your time watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.